40 years. Normally what we would do is we would, the faculty would walk around to each table and sort of go through some of the terminology with you at the table. If necessary, draw a picture. This year we're going to try to do a different, we just have to do it once. And since this is being recorded, Dr. Ingalls is going to make sure that all of you get to see this over and over and over again prior to your next exam. Now, the reason that we're going over this terminology is because when we were and were faced with learning something called the greater momentum and the lesser momentum, mesocolons, colons, ligaments, it was overwhelming. And you never, at least I didn't, figure out how to actually learn this stuff until the next year after I took it when they asked me to teach it. And so I learned my own little tricks of learning this stuff, and I'm going to give you my tricks. You may have better ones, but these are the ways I learn. I'm going to draw on this board a sagittal cup. Not necessarily sagittal, let's say Paris. So I'm not going to go right down the middle of somebody's abdomen. I'm going to go a little bit more to the right side. So because it's not that center, we'll call it a parasagittal cut. So as if I'm standing here and I have split myself almost down the middle, and you are looking from the side of me, anterior is over here, posterior is over here, right? This brown represents my abdominal muscle before you ever open me up. Here in front, my anterior body wall. This is my posterior body. Up here, just for the sake of orientation, I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. And we're going to call this the diaphragm. Diaphragm. So we're going to use that sort of as an orientation, right? So anterior post. Now I made a parasagittal cut. As you notice, liver is huge. It's the largest gland in the whole human body. It's the largest organ in the abdomen, not the largest organ in the body. That's the skin. It's the largest gland in, in the abdomen. So it's and it's in the body, it's the largest organ. It's huge. But since I'm making a cut like this, you're not going to see the whole liver. You're going to see a chunk of the side. So we're going to let this represent the liver. And in Latin, the Latin word for liver, tempo. So I'm going to just write that down because we're going to need to use that word when we talk about some of the other stuff. Tempo. My stomach, or their stomach, are j But we're cutting it this way. So we're only going to look through that part of the stomach. We're not going to j. So I'm going to make this the stomach. And in Latin, another word for stomach is gas. So we're going to have to use that word some way later, so I'm going to just write gas. So we have, so we have liver up above. We have section through the stomach or gaster. My transverse colon goes across transverse. But unlike your high school textbooks and maybe college books where they show it going horizontally across, the transverse colon actually goes up. And because it starts here underneath the liver, which is big, and it goes all the way up, up toward the diaphragm, so it's kind of angles that way. But again, we're cutting it like this, so we're only going to see a little bit of the transverse colon. I'm going to write the transverse colon down here. And just call it TC. Now, we also need to know what organ are although they're in the abdominal cavity, are not within what we call the peritoneal cavity, or even related, like these other organs are, to being covered with peritoneal. 
So there are organs in our abdomen that are located posterior. They're actually located along the posterior body wall. They're actually touching the posterior body wall. So imagine, if you will, looking at me with my scrubs off, my abdominal wall. All my organs are gone, temporary. There's no organs in me, no organs, no peritoneum, nothing. But I'm going to put inside of me a tube on my right side and just lay it inside. So the back of the tube is touching muscle. The front of the tube is touching nothing. I'm going to call that the ascending pole. I'm going to put another section of tube on my left side. Again, part of the tube is touching my back body wall, but that's the only part that's touching anything. It's touching the front of the sides. Of it. I'm going to call that my descent. So I've got an ascending and descending colon inside my abdominal cavity. But the only thing that those two tubes are touching is the muscle on my posterior body wall. I'm then going to take a duodenum that's C-shaped. I'm going to lay that in. But the very beginning of my duodenum and the very end of my duodenum are going to be poking anterior. So neither the beginning nor the end of my duodenum are touching the posterior wall. Only most of the... Yeah, I'm just going to let that go. Inside of the C, I'm going to stick my pinky. I'm going to just wedge it right inside of the and I'm going to let it go toward the left, but the very end of it, the part that we call a tail, I'm going to bend it up. So it's sticking up like part of the beginning of the duodenum. So therefore, most of the pain is in my back, but not the tail. It's sticking up. And so far, I have an ascending colon, a descending colon, <coughs> most of the duodenum, most of the pancreas in there, touching the back body wall only. Nothing else is touching. I'm going to put in two kidneys with urine coming off. On top of my kidneys, I'm going to put two glands that lay people call adrenal. You, as an animal, call them suprarenal glands. They're above the kidney. Same scenario. The back wall of my kidneys and my urine are touching the wall, my muscle. My suprarenal glands are touching it, but nothing in the front. I'm also going to lay in an aorta and put that more on the midline area by my vertebrae. The yeah. inferior vena cava. Put that more over here on. So then, then I'm going to stop and I'm going to look at everything that I've laid in. So so far I've laid into this big abdominal cavity that is empty. An ascending and descending colon, a duodenum, a pancreas. Two kidneys with ureters coming off of the nose, two suprarenal glands, an aorta, and a kidney. All of those are touching the back body wall. Then I'm going to take this big plastic bag, clear plastic, but it's not made of plastic, it's called keratin. It's a bag example, but it's a bag. I'm going to take the bag and I'm going to stuff it inside. So the bag is going to be in front of those organs. But some of that peritoneum of the bag is going to touch the front and the side. So they're not in the bag. They're outside. The, they're actually behind the bag. So they're retro peritoneum. Therefore, if I wanted to operate on those organs, I wouldn't have to open the bag. I could operate on my kidneys from the side. I could operate on other structures from the side but never enter that bag. They're retro peritoneum. Now, the beginning and the end of the kingdom, when I push the bag in, they poke the hole in it. So now there's the tail of the pancreas, it poked the hole in it. So now it's sticking. So things aren't perfect. Now I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to open the bag. And I'm going to just open it up. I'm going to throw inside of this bag a jejunum and an ilium. Tell them to match where you're supposed to. I'm going to throw in a liver. I'm going to throw in a gallbladder. I'm going to throw in a stomach. I'm going to throw in a transverse colon. 
And I'm going to tell everybody, move to where you're sitting. So everybody's taking up their position inside the peritoneal bag. The bag is inside is the peritoneal cavity. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clean up here and I'm going to start wrapping that's in the bag. I'm going to wrap the stomach front and back. I'm going to wrap as much of the liver in the gallbladder. But, but I'm going to then, once I'm through wrapping the stomach and the liver, which are up here, I'm going to just simply take that sheet of peritoneal and wrap the transverse colon. And then I'm going to wrap the jejunum and the ilium. So this sheet of peritoneum is going to be contiguous. I could literally walk from my stomach on the peritoneum down to my transverse colon and then eventually make my way to all the other organs. But I'm going to completely wrap them. Well, that brings us then to peritoneum. There's two kinds of spy peritoneum two ways. One is parietal peritoneum and the other is visceral. Parietal peritoneum touches a body wall. Visceral peritoneum touches as a thing of visceral. So that sheet of peritoneum that I use to wrap my stomach in is wrapped with peritoneum. And so is so is my uh, gallbladder, so is my liver, so is my transcone, all those structures. Those are wrapped with visceral peritoneum. But the peritoneum that is touching the muscle on my body, both my back body wall and the front wall is reflected. That's called what kind of? Not called visceral. What did I say the other? Parietal. So parietal perineum touches a body wall. Parietal anything touches a body wall. Visceral anything touches this. Okay? That's simple. Don't make it as complicated as I do. Try to figure out. Okay, all right, so now because every one of those organs is wrapped with peritoneum, and because I have that visceral, because I have parietal peritoneum on my body wall, my organs, because of the peritoneum covering, because of the parietal peritoneum covering my body, the wall of those organs never touch. There's a little gap in there between parietal and visceral. And that's called the peritoneal cavity. It's a potential. Nothing should be in it. A little bit of serous fluid. A little bit of capillary thick fluid. So that when my intestines are peristalting as food is going through them and they're contracting and expanding and they're rubbing each other, they don't cause But normally, nothing is in that peritoneal cavity. And some of your teachers today do, for the first time, put air in if you open them up. But prior to today, nothing but serious fluid. Now, you put air in. The individuals that have their appendix out, that perineal cavity was violated by the surgeon when they either put throw cards in there to put laparoscopically or they open them up. So if we should ask you on an exam, which of the following is located in the perineal cavity? And one of the answers, none of the above, what are you going to say? None of the above, because there's nothing. It's a potential. Okay? And it is created by the fact that every organ is wrapped with peritoneum, the body wall is wrapped with peritoneum, and the space between those two is empty. You know, now, in some people, that perineal cavity Filled with fluid. We'll talk about that in a second. Right? But under most circumstances, no air, no blood, no pus, no abnormal stuff. Empty. Okay? Now, when I drew this, I didn't draw the paint. I'm going to draw the paint sort of behind the stump. We'll make it bring easily in text. Now, blue is going to represent peritoneum. So I'm going to draw a peritoneum on the anterior body wall. Oh, is that peritoneum parietal or visceral? 
draw it. I'm going to draw it down here, and then I'm going to bring it up the posterior body. That right on the wrist. Right. I'm going to bring it up to the top. I'm going to take it under the diaphragm, bring it on to the liver. And now start to cover the liver. Now, is that bridal or this? Yeah. This Perfect. Okay, that's the way you think. Touches an organ is visceral. If it touches the body wall, it's bridal. Might be contiguous, but if you're touching something that's not body wall, touching an organ, it's got to be visceral. This peritoneum that, I, that I'm bringing up here to the pancreas, do I, based on what we said, do I want to draw the peritoneum going behind the pancreas, or do I want to draw the peritoneum going in front of it? Why in front? What is the terminology that we use for the pancreas? Retral peritoneum. Behind peritoneum. So when you look at your text, peritoneum will be in most of the pancreas. We'll bring it up. We'll bring it over. Exactly. So I almost covered the whole liver. There's one part of it I didn't want to worry about that. Much. I'm going to bring this peritoneum off the liver, and I'm going to bring it over to the stomach, and I'm going to cover the stomach with visceral peritoneum. I said that the sheen of peritoneum was contiguous. Well, if Chuck Severin had designed it, and he was told when you're done wrapping the stomach, wrap the transverse colon is right there, Chuck would have just wrapped it in his colon. But nobody asked him. So what was done was this peritoneum that comes off the stomach bypasses temporarily the transverse. Loop comes up, then it wraps the transverse. So it creates this kind of loop, this, this kind of apron thing of peritoneum. Which naturally an anatomist has to name you. Naturally, it makes my life miserable. And it's going to make your life miserable in the next five weeks, but you got to learn it. So we're going to come back to it. And then that peritoneum is going to come off the transverse pole. It's going to go back. So right now, it looks like what I've done is I've created here by wrapping the peritoneum. The One that has the stripes and one that doesn't. Looks like I've got a smaller sack within a bigger one. It looks like when I open up this person and I look inside, looking for this apron and for the stone and the liver, I was looking into this big sack. Well, again, not to be fancy, this big sack is the greater. So, the, what do you think? The smaller. The less. For a year, I had no clue where the lesser sack was. I just would go over to the neighborhood and look, and they couldn't see it. <laughs> then I had a teacher the next year, and so I had to come up with, well, how the heck am I going to So, a lesser sack is a greater sack. Who opened this, these, your teachers up, you saw the greater sack. You didn't see the lesson. You were staring at it. You may have looked between your liver and the stump. You may have grabbed that apron and flipped it off and flipped it down. And you were literally grabbing the lesser, what used to be the lesser set. These older people, even lesser than the lesser. Now, so again, I look for symmetry. So good, we have two sets. What's called greater? A lesser? Yep, there's a lesser. Well, anatomists, they weren't satisfied with just leaving it at that. So they looked at the peritoneum that attached one organ to another. Since the first block, you learned the concept of a ligament. Connects bone to bone. Strong, realish. But if the definition of a ligament is to connect one structure to another, anatomists didn't care to strengthen. They just did it or didn't. 
So they created a lot of terminology in here in which ligament simply to describe perineum that attaches one organ to another. And they group these ligaments into two clusters. They call one group of ligaments the greater ulna. So, omenta. You hear us say omenta? We're talking peritoneum. Okay? So, you don't have to literally see it, but if you and Dr. standing over there by the sink and he mentions omenta, that's fair. He's talking about some kind of period. So, we just have to learn this terminology. I would have just left it with greater peritoneum, but that made it too easy. So, they had to add omenta. Well, if there's a greater and chucks everyone's symmetry somewhere, I wanted symmetry. What I noticed when I studied the lesser romantic is that it was composed of two structures. When I studied the great romantic, I noticed it was composed of two structures. Almost. <laughs> but we'll worry about the almost. Lesser elements. What are the two structures? Well, I know that at the end of them, they're both called liquid. Using the Latin terminology, if you were asked to name the peritoneum that connects liver, using Latin terminology, liver, stump, a petal, Gastric ligament. Okay. If I'm standing here, a little bit more to my right is my duodenum. And there's peritoneum that goes from my liver to my duodenum. What would you call that? A paddle duodenum or a paddle duodenum. Fancy. That's the way I like it. Beauty of less momentum is, I, I wish that started with nature, but that's okay. Both of them started to liver, both the stomach or the duodenum. Greater momentum. Greater momentum talks about the peritoneum that goes from stomach to other structures. So here we have peritoneum going from stomach coming down and going up. Call it the greater momentum, but if we said identify be specific on an example, we would expect you to say gastro joint colon gastro colon ligament. Now there, somebody listen. That starts with P. That starts. There's another ligament that goes from the stomach to the spleen. You want to call that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So one of your science friends said, "Well, liver starts with an L, so maybe." maybe so <laughs> have, but there's no liver gastric ligament or liver duodenal. It's a paddle. You got to use. They, so, so I would have left it as it is, but none of so there is peritoneum that you probably won't see that goes from the stomach to the diaphragm, and in first block of the phrenic nerve, you hear about the phrenic. Yeah. Well, the phrenic nerve is when you hear of diaphragm, phrenic into mind, the nerve, blood vessels. So there is another ligament called the gastro. But since you're not going to see it, I would worry uh, for my exam about gastrocolic and gastrosplenic hepatogastric. Okay? We know that exists. 
So I don't want my professors rolling over in their graves that I didn't cover. But it screwed up my symmetry. Because <laughs> I didn't have two and two. So, all right. Now, <clears throat> if we look at this, so we see then that these ligaments actually help create this lesser sac. If you don't have those ligaments intact, that lesser sac is blending in with the gradient. But I drew a circle over here because on the right side, as Dr. Ingalls and I will show you, you could know the second. You know, it's not made of cartilage, it's not made of bone, it's not made of muscle. There's a natural open that we could stick our, our purple fingering on the right side and actually pass it from the greater stack to the lesser. And we'll hopefully be able to show our finger wiggle inside the lesser stack. It's open. Years ago, in an animal, there's three names for every structure, believe it or not, in the human body. Somebody tagged their name to every, probably the individual that found it. Well, the one individual that found this locally, his last name is Winsor. So, of all of the Eponyms that are used that we don't we will will use all I think I have it even in my notes Winsor simply because it is so common among clinicians even dental that I'm going to put down epiphor framing or framing of win law but you tell us epiphor framing you get. Mm -hmm. you still get so don't try to memorize any more. Than that. But I'm putting that up there because it just seems like I went to my dentist two months, two weeks ago, and told him, "Go start yet? No, you know, a couple of weeks. Oh, you're going to cover the frame in the Do You remember that? <laughs> so okay, so that's that. All right, so that's a natural open. Right? We're going to sort of come back to that. Now. Um, is the ascending and descending colon, how do we describe those as far as their location? Retroperitoneal. But the transverse is not, it's not touching the back, it's hanging. It's very near drawing it to hang. So again, to make everybody's life visible, anatomists weren't satisfied with calling stuff. They used the expression mesocolon. Meso Mesocolon, you just have to bite the bullet, memorize the word, mesocolon. So if Dr. Costa said, I think there's a tumor on the mesocolon, a large node on the mesocolon, and you're walking around someplace, you should think, oh, it, it, it's Got some to, to be on the peritoneus. Where? Well, what an animus did was they, depending on what peritoneum is attached to an organ, that's what they use as the first thing. So, this peritoneum that connects transverse pole, transverse to the posterior body wall, what kind of musical pole would you want to call it? Transverse. So if we tell you we see a tumor on the transverse, there's an enlarged node on the transverse mesal cord, you're thinking, oh, that's the perineum that's holding the transverse colon to the posterior body wall. I can flip the transverse colon up, I can flip it down, but I can't take it out of the first because the transverse mesal colon is anchored. There's also a meso, there's also a mesocolon associated with the sigmoid colon. We will show you. We'll be able to wiggle the sigmoid colon when we go to a bone, but we can't lift it out of there. That's called the what? Sigmoid mesocolon. So this is there, but there's also a sigmoid. Okay. 
the appendix. If you look at it and it's still there, there's a little bit of ferret hand that runs along the edge of it. So you can flip the appendix around, but you can't do much more than that. That's called the mesocolon of the appendix. So there are three mesocolons transverse, a sigmoid, and a mesocolon of the appendix. There are no other mesocolons we need to worry about. Those three. It's enough. And those mesocolons ain't an organ to the posterior body wall. And they prevent, they allow some movement, but not unrestricted. That's why I said we can't, if we show you the transverse colon, one of us are going to grab it and try to lift it out. And we're not going to be able to. We may ask, why can't I lift this thing out? What is anchor? You're not going to be able to see it because you just said, well, I'll get somewhere near the transverse mesal colon. That's what's done. All right. Now, all of, well, let's take one more structure. I can't draw 23 feet of small intestine. How much? Go on. This is my version of small intestine. Well, I do it in the J. Junior McGill. There's a pair of them that pulled the J. Junior McGill to the posterior body wall. But that's not cool. So we can't call it a meter. We can call it a sigmoid and the transverse and the appendix attached to the cecum of the water. We call that a meter. We can't call that a meter. So what we're going to call Well, an animal called this paradigm that holds the small intestine of the body present. And a hundred years went by. And everyone called the perineum that holds the small intestine posterior body wall. Mesenteric. And then surgeons one day. And they started calling everything that. They called the great omenum. They called the lesser omenum. Everything called messenger. The animals got ticked. They said, okay, we're not going to try to change your mindset. But what we'll do is to make sure that we're all on the same page, we'll call this the mesentery proper. Or in some texts, it's called the, in quote, mesentery. The real man. All right? That's how that came about. Had, had surgeons not become so sloppy in their terminology, we wouldn't have had to be so fussy about mesentery. But when they started calling everything, in fact, when I was a student, I was at Buffalo General, there was an operation going on, and naturally I'm holding the retractor, saving the person's life by holding the retractor. And the surgeon said, drop the retractor, grab the mesentery, and lift it up. What did the surgeon tell me to grab? No, no, grab the mesentery and lift it up so I could see the transverse. What did I grab? The greater moment. But I didn't say to the surgeon, oh no, that's not the mesentery. That's a great omen. And in fact, that's the gastrocolic part of it. But I wanted to grab it. <laughs> so I just grabbed what he told me to grab and lifted it up. But I saw firsthand how they just used mesentery. For they didn't say, could you grab the gastrocolic part of the omen? That's too many words. So we, but you are an animal. It's like, we want you to learn just right. We just want you. So if on an exam, or if we, if you're, if you come over to see us and say, oh, I want you to see the mesentery. And they are human. On our way to your table, we're thinking this. Not anything else. 
be careful. The way you use your terminology. Yeah. So that's it. That's that's the main stuff. So the thing about all of this is that peritoneum is a good dialyzing member. It, the reason we have this peritoneum is not just to connect one organ to another so they don't fall all over the place, but as we will see, as you will show each other, peritoneum, blood vessel, nerves, use the peritoneum to get to their organ. But we want you to see general organization because starting tomorrow, group B and group C, who are going to dissect some blood vessels, celiac artery, urinary ventricular mesenteric, they're going to destroy them. And everything yeah. So you need to sort of understand that before it's when the group C looks for the superior and inferior mesenteric artery in his branches, they're going to destroy mesentery prompt. When group B looks for the celiac artery in its branch, they're going to destroy the hepatogastric and the hepatoduodenal part of the list. But until they destroy it, we want you to. So because all these blood vessels are in here, because peritoneum is a good dialyzer, my kidneys aren't working correctly. In fact, pretty near not. I have two choices kidney transplant, and I'm on the list. I could do hemodialysis where I have to go over to Sheridan Drive three times and have them blood a big machine. Or I could do peritoneal diet. I could come into my doctor's office in the morning, have the doctor put a fork over here. Stop talking. And put in a hypertonic solution into my peritoneal cavity. Because all the toxins are in my blood, they'll be sucked into that fluid over time. And then I can drain the fluid. So I can pull on my business. I can go shopping. I can go to my dentist. Nobody even knows except my dentist. Because someday you're going to have a patient in your office, and I know one dentist that said he had a patient come in with an empty bag, chewed it. And as he was laying in the chair, Dennis was working. He turned on the stop. He was cleaning himself. He was undergoing peritoneal dialysis. It's not the best way of filtering blood, but it's people at least are taking advantage of this stuff. All this spirit, me, and the fact that the blood vessels that you are going to look that are in that. Usually, what is told, I told you the epithelial frame is on which side, right or the left side? Right side, perfect. So, I'm going to fill this up with fluid. Fluid is going to go into my epithelial frame, drip down, fill my lesson, and then fill up. When I open the port, I'm going to drain my greater. Am I going to drain everything out? No. Where's the other chunk in my lesser sac? So after I leave my dentist, the doctor knows I'm going to my dentist. My doctor will say to me, when you go home, after, if there's no more fluid coming out, I want you to lay on your side. And about 20 minutes later, you may notice some more fluid. The doctor is going to tell me to lay on my right side or my left side to drain my lesser sac. Which side of my abdomen is that epithelial frame? Right side. So do I want to lay on my left or lay on my right side so that I could get the fluid out the hole? Lay on my left side, I'm just in my So there's a logic behind that thing. They're not going to tell the patient, oh, now you have an epithelial side. Mm -hmm. Let's say lay on my So you, for you as dentist, real experience, maybe even something. Someday, somebody in your family will have sort of as a as a safe way of toxins. The kidneys aren't working correctly until they can either get transplanted or ultimately have to do. It. Now, one more. Thing. Notice up here when I brought 
here at me on the front, the front, right up here at me on the liver to make it consistent. There's a part of the liver up here that's the void of that area. It's called the bare In my world, that would be something to me. You know, somebody corrected. So it's bare air. It's devoid of parity. But there's perineum that, because it's reflecting off the diaphragm, all over them, it's kind of surrounding. And when anatomists saw it, they called the parity that comes off the diaphragm, on the liver. They called it the pulmonary ligament. Coronation is when you're chronic. For instance, what shape is it? What shape is it? Circle. That's what I thought. So I'm looking at this thing called the coronary ligament, and I'm thinking, oh, it's this round thing. So then I'm looking in Grant's atlas, and I'm looking in my cylinder. And they're talking about a right and left triangular part. Then I'm thinking, how could you have a right and left part around? And then I'm really because not only do I know anatomy, I don't even really, I don't know where from. Well, I come to realize after looking at Grant's Atlas and looking at the coronary ligament borders that the coronary ligament is not, it's diamond. Similar to this. Diamond. <laughs> diamond. Now, if my head is the lip. The diaphragm is up there. This is the coronary ligament. See? So yes, it is on top of my liver, like a crown, but it's diamond shaped. And in Grant's app, and in your pictures, and in your double, it says over here that there's a right, this is my right side, this is my left side. It has a right triangular angle and a left. Now I am they were talking about. But I didn't know that. This bare area, where's that in relationship to the coronary ligament? Well, can you guys see the bare area? Yeah. <laughs> it's inside of it. Now, over these years, the bare area has become bigger and bigger, but it's there. So, if we should ask you on an exam in relation to the coronary ligament, where's the bare area of the liver? You're going to say it's outside or inside? Inside, it's on. There. So what's the big deal about that? Well, everyone who who has cancer of some structure in the pelvis, or even in the abdomen, that cancer will often spread or metastasize. It's just that's. The and when it gets inside the liver, it's going to grow. To look for an area inside the liver of least resistance. So the cancer inside the liver is going to try to go that way, and posteriorly, internally, and it's going to notice that as it grows secret, the only thing that it has to go is the tax. There's no peritoneum. When it tries to go this way, the peritoneum, which is flimsy, thick, almost as if it made a thick wall. So but nothing is to stop the liver, the cancer, spreading through the cancer, through the diaphragm, up into the So when radiologists, so the liver we know is on the right side. When radiologists look at radiographs of somebody with, who's had colon cancer, that is now spread to the liver, they want to see how fast that is, still in the liver or elsewhere. They're going to look in the chest. Are their eyes going to look on the right side of the chest first or the left side? Right, why the right side? Because the liver is down here and they want to see did that cancer bust through the bare area, bust through the diaphragm, and get into the lung? They'll look at both sides, but you'll literally see their eyes looking at the right side of the 
now the barrier isn't just some more figment. It does become important, not in a good way, but in a bad way. But we need to and become involved with cancer spreading from the abdominal cavity. One of the ways from the beginning to the thorax, we'll learn another way. Okay, Dr. Engels. Yes, sir. Post. Yeah. No, Dr. Engels. Dr. Gibbons. So we got, so we got, so we got, so we got, we got greater, lesser sac, we got the cranium, we got never, we probably got two cold. You know what retroperitoneal is? Stuff, okay. Last year, over in the dental lab, Dr. Engel saw a person who had a ruptured aorta on one of the bones, and there was this god awful coagulated blood because the aorta ruptured. When that aorta ruptured, the day that that, that person's pressure didn't. 120 over zero. It went from 120 over 80 to maybe 70 over 40 because the peritoneum, the order was behind it, it actually flipped more blood. Flow. The problem is by the time people realized that, it started. So having peritoneum, having stuff that's retroperitoneal. Is good because that peritoneum can restrict abscesses from spreading on the pancreas. I saw that. Never saw the order. So there's so it is they're not memorizing what structure is retro peritoneal. There's a lot here. Should we have a tray on your hem with all these organs laid out? H and ask you to tell us which of these organs is normally located in retro peritoneal. You're looking for the diaphragm, the ace, the pancreas, except for its tail. The Lord has gave us the opinion here. And today in lecture, I'll show you one way of.